Hello everybody and welcome back to Minecraft. So in the last episode we got started with the basics of Thorncraft and got our feet wet with it. But this time we're going to dive in head first without a safety net and make some really cool stuff. So let's get right to it. Okay, so uh, first things first, I know what you're thinking, don't know what you're talking about. That, that building is exactly the same as it's always been, haven't done a thing to it, not at all. <laughs> Uh, but apart from that, I found some silverwood trees. I got lucky with some saplings when I chopped a couple of them down. And managed to plant a couple here. Didn't get any ore nodes on them, which is kind of a shame. But hey-ho, what can you do? Uh, sometimes they do just uh, spawn with ore nodes on them. They just sort of show up as a little purple blob on the side of them that you can drain some magic from. But no luck. Maybe I'll plant some more if I chop these down and uh, see if I can't do that. Um, although that will turn the surrounding area into a magical forest, which I'm not entirely sure I want. I might do, I don't know. Uh, just some other stuff before we get into uh, more Thorncrafty stuff. Uh, I've updated our farm a little bit. Uh, so I'll just uh, put these two plots to wheat so it would grow a little bit faster to supply our cows and breed them. And I also planted this cotton, uh, which is growing very nicely and giving us hundreds of cotton to make uh, string and wool out of. So I've basically got fully automated wool now, which is pretty cool. Well, almost fully automated. I have to craft it. Let's see if we can figure out a way to get it, make it completely automated. And I also planted these end lily seeds here as well. Uh, I just replaced the ground with end stone for this because apparently it grows sl slightly faster on end stone than on grass. So I figured why not? Um, haven't massively noticed the difference. Haven't really been checking too much, but I don't know. They might be growing faster. Uh, the fertilizer doesn't work on these things, but hey ho. At least we're getting some fully automated ender pearls in now. So that's pretty cool. Um, also, some other stuff I did. Um, I fixed up our farm a little bit. I made this thing a little bit bigger because it was getting a bit hectic. Um, if I sort of like fertilize these things and get a load of wheat in, then it goes crazy and this thing will just fill up with baby cows completely. It goes a bit mental. Um, but I also had to fix this thing just a little bit and I'll show you how I did that. Uh, so because the grinder is right next to it, when it killed the uh, cows that grew up that are going into the grinder, Occasionally you kill them slightly over these sewers, and these sewers will pick up mob essence, which is kind of useful, but you can use that to uh, make spawners, that kind of thing. Uh, but not very good for this little uh, sewage network, considering that this composter won't pick it up, it will just clog up the pipe system and stay there. Uh, so what I did was just build a little tank here, I waited until this was clogged up with uh, the mob essence, this green stuff, and plunked a tank down that it could flow into, so now any mob essence is going to go into this tank, and any uh, sewage is going to go into this composter should all work fine. Uh, so the tank is dead easy to make. Oop, let's get back up here. Boop. There we go. Uh, the tank is this one, BC Factory one. It's just a ring of glass. Uh, you can just kind of stack them up on top of each other to make a big tank. So I'll keep an eye on this thing, make sure it doesn't fill up too much. And maybe get to using that at some point. And I think that was a lot for everything out here. I think it's all good. Yeah, cool. So let's get back to Thorncraft. So yeah, oh um, god that guy scares the crap out of me every time. I made a little uh, armor stand here just to uh, put some armor on, uh, put my spare jetpack on. Just right click on with some armor and he'll uh, take the armor off me and wear it. Or if I right click on him without anything in my hand, he'll swap out the armor for everything that I'm wearing. So that's kind of useful. But anyway, he can stay there and be there. It's just so I don't have to wait for the uh, jetpack to refill every time I want to use it. Uh, so, yeah, I've done a fair bit of redesigning here. This is our new Thorncraft room, and I think it looks pretty freaking cool. I'm really happy with how this came out, uh, rather than the tiny thing we had before, which was never going to be big enough for all this stuff that I completely forgot about. So, you're probably wondering what in the hell all of this new stuff is. Don't worry, got to go through it all. It'll be fine. Uh, first, the things that we know about, just to make sure I've got them all here, or show you I've got them all here. Got our research table that we had before, and our arcane work table we had before. Um, Emmy crafting terminal as always. Uh, got our crucible with some nitro underneath it, which is boiling up nicely. And if not, water source in the back. And our arcane infuser, uh, which, yeah, looks pretty cool. And all these arcane pedestals are around it, which is the same one we made for the middle of this thing. Uh, but this is uh, essentially where you put the items that are going to infuse into the item you put into the middle. Uh, so I've got a ring of 12 of them around the outside. I think that's the maximum you need. Uh, but it's very important to get these symmetrical. So if you only have four of them, you just kind of do one, two, three, four. Um, but for 12 are kind of gone as symmetrical as I can get it. I think it's basically symmetrical. Um, 
but it is very important because when you're infusing things, um, anything that's not symmetrical creates instability, which is a very important thing, which I'll get into a little bit more as we go on. Okay, so now for the new stuff. Um, so as for all of these crazy things, which make cool noises when you hit them, which amuses me for hours. Um, so these are jars of Essentia. And these are quite important, as in you need them for this arcane infusing, infusing stuff. Um, so how you do this stuff, well first you make the jars. So let's go ahead and make ourselves an extra couple. This just glass panes in an arcane workbench with a wood slab on top. Uh, let's make another, say, four or so. That should be good. Ooh, bink. Uh, make me a couple of them. Uh, of course, that takes a little bit of mana. Uh, I think it's water, uh, water viz, something like that. Uh, I've got some arcane jars. Cool. Let's grab all this stuff back out of there. And you two. What are you seeing in there? And plonk these down here as well. Boop, boop, boop. Go away, Nightor. I don't need you. Boop. Did that actually go? Oh, good. Occasionally when I take out Nitor, it just kind of stays there. I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, I'll like, get the item out, but the light will just kind of stay there. It's weird. Anyway, uh, so once you've got the jars, you'll need this thing. The alchemical furnace and the arcane alembics. Also, forgive me if I call these albemics. For some reason, when I was a kid, I once read it as albemic, and my brain just keeps thinking that for some reason. So I occasionally call them albemics, even though it's alembic. So, apologies for that. <laughs> anyway, so to make these things, go look in our Thorminomicon under Alchemy. Um, so here's the water jars that we were making. Uh, we need to do. We needed to do this research, which is essentially a distillation. So this is the alchemical furnace uh, out of the arcane stone block, which we made for our um, arcane infusion altar, uh, which is smooth stone and shard with some mana. Very good. Get back. Uh, so that makes the alchemical furnace, ah, and a crucible and furnace, yeah, all that stuff. Uh, so this thing on its own is really not going to do a lot, it's just going to kind of be there. Uh, so what we need is the arcane alembics, which are going to go on top, and for that we need a viz filter, which is gold and silverwood logs, uh, makes a viz filter with some mana, of course, and then iron, gold, and a bucket, job done, made alembics. So we put five of these alembics on top of one alchemical furnace. Now, as for what the bloody thing is, uh, it's incredibly important. So this thing smelts things down into their base aspects. So if I chuck this nitor in here, um, if you hold shift over it because we've done our research, uh, we can see that uh, five lux, three potentia, three fire, and one census, I think that is. So if we chuck that in there, the alembics will distill it into those base elements. So we should see these start appearing, hopefully. Come yeah, on, that's done it there. That's just cooked it into raw slurry. These are gonna distill it into the elements, there we go. that has got some luck, some fire, some potentia, and some census, cool. So as for how to get these things out originally, you're basically just gonna have to grab the jars and fill them up yourself. So lux, uh, there's lux, grab that jar, boop. And fill it up, put it back down, simple as that and incredibly boring and dull to do so, but kind of necessary. Uh, fire, I've got loads of fire. I'm not entirely sure why I've got that much fire, but no. I have a heck of a lot of it. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, I've been doing this for a long time, getting all these jars full of stuff. Uh, generally, just kind of get um, all the stuff that I need to craft the couple of things that we're going to be doing today. And naturally, because there's so many different elements in things, that means I've got a ton of other stuff that I have no idea what I'm really doing with. But, you know, that's fine. We're going to need it all eventually anyway. I uh, should have Potentia in here somewhere. It should be grey. Greyish. Maybe. Potentia. Ah, there you are. Blue-grey. Cool. So, yeah, it can be kind of tough to figure out which jars are which at the base uh, when you first start off doing this thing. Just sort of go roughly by the colours. It usually works out. Census is blue. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Uh, I should have sense in here somewhere. I've done night tour before, surely. Have I? Now I think about it, I'm not sure I have. Um, yeah, so as you can see, this is... Oh, there it is. It's just, I've got barely any of it. Uh, this is not exactly a, a very good way of doing things because it's slow and incredibly boring. But we are going to move on to a good way to automate this after we make our very first cool thing that we're going to infuse. I haven't infused anything yet. I want to share the first time with you. So I know how cool it is and how cool it looks. So the first thing I want to make is under artifice. 
and I want to make these boots of the Traveler that I've researched. And these things are very cool. They let you run faster, jump faster, and fall further. Not quite as good as our long fall boots for fall damage, but they are still pretty cool all the same. So this is an arcane infusion recipe. Uh, gonna make the boots of the Traveler. So we need some leather boots to go in the middle. They're the things that are gonna get infused. We need some air shards, raw fish, feather, and two enchanted fabric. Okay, so we don't have any enchanted fabric, so let's go ahead and make some of this stuff. And I know that that is wool and string. Of course, the um, Thormonomicon will tell you that. And I'm going to need a ton more of this stuff as well. So we need two for this recipe. Uh, what else do we need? We need one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And oop, I've run out of viz on that one. That's fine. So use that one and one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, not six. Uh, where's my string? Ah. Uh, something like that. I'll just make an extra turn. Uh, so the reason I'm making this uh, extra bit is because I need to do this in here. What I'm doing is because I want to make some armor out of this stuff. It's not armor in terms of um, protection. This is armor in terms of making things and these. So if I finish off making this, I need the trousers. There we go. Boop. Cool. And um, we can have some thaumaturgist robes. That's pretty sweet. Oh, so you, oh no, I don't need to do that. There we go. You take all my old stuff and I'm going to put this stuff on. But I want those goggles back, please. Uh, take you off. Click you. There we go. Cool. Got a lot of thaumaturgist stuff. So uh, this isn't actually going to give us any protection, really. The main thing we want it for is this Viz discount, so that when we start crafting things in here, um, it's going to cost us less on our one. See, that's down to 90% Viz cost now, which is pretty awesome. And I'm actually going to have to go and get some more mana for this thing a little bit later. It should be fine for now, though. Uh, but let's get on to making those boots for the Traveler. So we know that our leather boots are going in the middle. Let's get all this stuff down there. Uh, feather as well, and is that everything? I think that's everything, is it? I think I'm missing something. Oh, of course, the fabric. There we go. Uh, leather boots going in the middle, there we go. And we are having a one of them, a one of them, a one of them, a fish that can go over here, why not? I don't think you have to match the uh, pattern exactly as it is in the Thormonomicon. Might be a good idea to do it just in case, but yeah, it'll be fine probably. Um, what else do you need? My two fabric, fabric, and fabric. So as you can see, I'm putting these down in the most symmetrical way I can. Uh, so because there's six of them, I can just put them at every other pedestal, which makes it nice and easy. Like I said, if you don't put it symmetrically, then it will create instability, and that can have random flux effects be it sort of knocking things off pedestals, or it could, I don't know, shoot lightning at you and make you all dizzy and horrible and poison you, or it can just flat out destroy some of these items. Not fun stuff, but we can find a way to combat that instability, which we will get into a little later as well. Okay, so I think I've got everything in place, so let's take another look in our Thormonomicon. So I've got everything in place, got a little bit of the middle, all the stuff around, and we need 25 eater and 25 flight which I should have got already. Yep, 39 eater and flight. We've got 50, we've got loads of that, cool. So let's craft this thing. Let's just whack this thing with our wand. Boop, and off we go. All right, so now we need to kind of keep an eye on our items out there. Make sure nothing gets knocked off because even with a low, in, uh, low instability chance, which this recipe has, then these can still get knocked off. And when they do, when there's not an item on the pedestal that it needs, it'll end up drawing more um, Essentia than it needs. Which is, you know, it's not the end of the world, but still nice to be able to not do that. Let's make sure nothing goes flying off. Oh, something did. Oh no, it just got sucked in, that's fine. We're all good, it's sucking the items in. Cool. And there goes the feather. And the fish. Cool, there we go. We have Boots of the Traveler. Awesome. So if I whack these things on, the Boots of the can go away for now. I move a heck of a lot faster. These things are super cool. And I forgot I don't have a jetpack on. 
you know, the amount of times I just jump out of things going, I can fly. Wait, no, I can't. I haven't got the jetpack on. But yeah, these things let us move a heck of a lot faster. That's just normal walking speed and running speed. Yeah, it basically lets you move like a ninja or something. And it lets you go up uh, one high blocks without having to jump, which is quite nice. And the standard jump is quite a bit higher now. I think it's uh, three blocks. So actually, yeah, let's double check that. Let's see, this is three blocks, isn't it? Yep, three blocks instead of one. That's pretty cool. So these are going to be quite, quite a nice way to sort of wander around as well. Even if we're going to have to be a little bit more careful in terms of fall damage, because they don't um, quite save you as much fall damage as the long fall boots do. So I will still die if I drop from a humongous height with these things on. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, they're going to have to unfortunately go away for now. Uh, because I need to craft some more things, which I'm going to need this, this discount for. Alright, uh, so what do I want to do next? I think what I want to do next is start automating some stuff. So, I want to automate this thing, and the way that I'm going to do that is with golems. There are, you can automate this with uh, tubes as well, but honestly, they're not very good at all. They're a pain in the ass. Uh, you can't just link them out and link them straight up with tubes. It doesn't work, because these things apply suction for the aspect that they're of, and if there's more than one suction... And it all jams it all up. It's horrible. You have to put valves in and turn them on and off. And ah, no, none of that sounds awful to me. So the way we're we're gonna do it is with golems, which is a much cooler and much more fun way of doing things. So I'm gonna make a wooden golem. I obviously researched all this stuff. So for this, we need four humanus, four motus, four spiritus, and chuck a great waddle log into the crucible. Okie dokie. That should be nice and easy. Uh, so, the normal way we'd be doing this is by looking at the elements and throwing specific items into here. But now that we have Essentia, we don't have to do that anymore. We can use these glass vials instead. So, let's grab a few of these. Um, and let's make... Uh, we only need one golem. Actually, yeah, that'll be fine. I'm going to end up with uh, excess uh, elements in there, but that's fine. So, what do we need? We needed Humanus. That's that one. A to that, and we needed is it motion, which is over here. Something that's the one. And what was the other one we needed? Uh, there you are. And spiritus, 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 spiritus. Where are you? That's uh, a white one somewhere. Ah, that's the one. Oh, just eight left. Perfect. So a thing to note about these glass vials is they can only hold eight essentia. And I don't mean that in the sense of they can hold a maximum of 8 essentia. I mean they can hold no more, no less, 8. That's it. So they're useless for draining these things. Because if you've got something that's only got 1 in, can't do anything with it. Can't pick it up. Not a thing. So you'd end up with a load of stuff left in there. I tried to do it. It did not work out well at all. So, now that we've got these files in, uh, we can chuck these strings to the crucible. And it gives that exact amount of that aspect, which is pretty awesome. I also need some great word logs. And so this was just four, wasn't it? If I look at this again. Yeah, four of each, and we've got eight of each. Cool, so we might as well make two of them. So in goes that one. Eight, in goes that one. Eight, in goes that one. So those files are pretty friggin' awesome because they let you just chuck in exactly that much element, and you don't have anything with the vials. You don't get any uh, elements from that, which is really useful. Oh. Sorry, Gollum, I didn't actually mean to put you down there. Um, you're just going to kind of be there now, because I can't pick you up yet. Oh, well, you'll be fine. <laughs> uh, so, what was I doing again? I was making the next thing. So, these Gollums, as you see, I just put one down, and it's not doing anything. Because it's dead, essentially. It doesn't have an animation core. It needs to put an animation core on these things to tell them what to do. Otherwise, they're just going to kind of be there and not do anything. So, for our animation cores on the Gollumancy page... Uh, I want an alchemy golem, so I've researched my way along here, uh, so I can do that thing. So, for an alchemy um, movement core, motion core, golem core, that's what they're called, uh, we need to have a decanting core first, which is perfectly fine, and for that we need a blank core. Uh, the blank core, it tells you how to do on this uh, gatherer one here, because that's the first one you can learn. So that's four bricks and a night ore, that's pretty easy. That I can certainly do. Uh, so if I look for uh, Night Ore, I should hopefully have some in here. Yep. After I went a little stir crazy with the Night Ore, putting it everywhere. And um, bricks. I have some bricks too. Cool. One, two, three, four. 
There we go. So let's go and make this blank core. One, two, three, four. And the night ore, boom, blank core. Awesome. All right, got our blank core. So the next thing we want to do is turn this into a decanting core so we can then infuse it into an alchemy core. So for that, we chuck our blank core into a crucible with five aqua and five vacuos. That's perfectly fine. Let's grab our vials again, because that'll be the easiest way to do this thing. Uh, so five aqua, uh, some of that, and five vacuos. I don't have enough vacuos, okay. Uh, so a good way to, uh, well, the, pretty much the main way you're gonna be um, finding the elements to fill these things up is by looking them up in your Formonomicon. Go on to basic information and to our aspects of magic and then find the uh, aspect that you want. So we want Vacuos on here somewhere. Do, 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 do. There you are. Then when you mouse over it, it'll tell you what you can get Vacuos from. So glass bottles or wooden bowls would be a good one for us, I think. Uh, buckets aren't great. You get way a lot of uh, metallum out of them. I don't really need any metallum. I've got tons of it. So if I search for wood, and let's make ourselves a little bit more wood. Okay, that'll be fine. Let's see how much a bowl would give us. That would give us one each, and that's it. Oh, okay, that's really good then. That's pretty much exactly what we want. Uh, let's actually make a couple more of them. Seeing as we've got a next to no vacuous, we might as well. Let's make me a stack of wood, there we go. Uh, make me some more of them. It's, okay, a stack is a bit much. Maybe do like that much. Okay, so I'm going to chuck this into here. I'll just put a hopper on here just so I can stack things up and let it all drain in by itself. That's going to make us some vacuos. And where is our vacuos? There it is. Boop. So let's go and fill this thing up. You don't have to worry about using the wrong essential jars when you're filling up these things. It literally won't fill up if you um, you do trying to use the wrong one. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna that'll do. I'll let the golem sort the rest out. Uh, let's just grab a vial straight from the crucible. Crucible alembic. Okay, one more. There we go. Got a vial of that. Awesome. Oop, easy. There we go. So back to our crucible, and we're gonna have a bit of waste here, but that's fine. So, uh, vacuous and aqua, awesome. Let's just chuck those straight in. Boop, boop. And our blank core, there we go. We have an animation core. Uh, so something else that I didn't realize before, um, something I was very used to from Thorncraft 3, we're obviously on Thorncraft 4 at the moment, is that uh, this doesn't create flux anymore. Flux isn't a big deal at all anymore. In Thorncraft 3, if you pumped a load of flux into the air, there was a chance that you might accidentally create taint around your entire world, which sucks. You do not want that. Oop. And also, if you leave stuff in here, it breaks down to its base aspects. That's what it's doing there. Oh, God. Yep, there it goes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we kind of let it boil over there because we uh, left it too long. Uh, so this stuff is essentially just kind of a little bit of fluxy, tainty stuff, which is going to do its thing, which I should probably clear that out. Let's grab some wool and just... Uh, break the stuff up. So unlike Thorncraft 3, where flux was really something you wanted to be careful of and avoid doing at all costs, come back wool, uh, in here it just doesn't really do anything. If you let it collect, it can sort of create puddles of taint, uh, which can sometimes spawn like uh, tainted creatures, like tainted uh, slimes, that kind of thing. But once you clear it up, it's gone. It's, it has no lasting effects whatsoever. So just don't let it build up, you know, sort of clear it out some blocks as it just there, did there. And you won't really have to worry about a thing. You can chuck as much stuff into the atmosphere as you want. Doesn't matter. So which is quite nice, because I was incredibly paranoid about it in Thorncraft 3, pumping flux out and hoping to God that I didn't taint my entire world. So that's quite nice. Anyway, moving on. So we want to move turn this uh, decanting core into an alchemy core. So let's look up how we're gonna do that. Uh Gonomancy, there we go. So we need a water jar, cool, uh, water, and three water bottles. Uh, that's pretty easy. I uh, might even have a spare empty water jar over here. Yes, I do. Boop, grab that. So let's grab a second one just in case. Um, so actually, how, how bad is it? Uh, okay, this one's instability is minor, so we shouldn't have any problems, but good idea just to have some spares of these things just in case. And uh, let's grab some water bottles. Uh, so have I got any bottles around? Nope. Uh, actually, yeah, let's 
make some of them. Uh, cheers, three glass, cool. Piece of cake, cool. So let's make some of them. Bip, 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 done. So is that it? That's a lot, isn't it? Yep, just four things on this one. So let's plunk down our water bottle and water bottle and do, 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 water bottle and our water jar. So again, keep this all very symmetrical as best we can. I think it's just on these corner ones because that works well for doing four items. And then we want our decant, uh, decanting core in the middle. There we go. And let's make sure we've got all the essential we need for this as well. So 15 aqua, 15 motors, 15 magic. Uh, aqua, we don't have enough actually. Let's chuck a water bottle in there. How much does this give me? That gives me one water, so we can chuck one and two. Job done. Oh, and two. What did I just chuck in? I don't even know. Oh well, it was something. Uh, so let's fill this up with water. Boop, there we go. And where is our water? There it is. Got that. Cool. Oop, come back here. Don't go back there. There we go. Uh, what else did we need? We needed uh, 15 motors. Okay. Motors, motors, motors. We've got that. Cool. And we need 15 magic. Oop, easy. Uh, pretty sure, yeah, I've got an unbelievable amount of magic because I chucked a load of that stuff in. Cool, looks like we're ready to do this thing. Well, let's go. Meow. Let's do this thing. We can also see if we come up a little bit closer how much uh, it's got of the elements and how much it needs, etc. So if you did magically run out, you could quickly go and get more. And now I think about it, I probably should have uh, got some more aqua just in case. Eh, it'll be fine, hopefully. I really hope so. Because if it uh, knocks an item off a pedestal or something, then it'll try to draw more. And if it can't, that's when bad things could happen. Uh, it'll probably be fine. Got a little bit of instability. You can see the lightning sparking off. That's the thing that damages you and knocks things off and occasionally breaks things. But this one's relatively minor, so should all be fine. Drawing an item's just fine. Cool. And there we go. Yeah, done. Awesome. So now we have a, an animation call for alchemy. Sweet. Uh, we're going to need one more thing before we use this thing. Stick this uh, jar back down. There we go. And that is a thing blue do. It's over here. There is Golomancer's Bell. So this is just nether quartz and a stick. So let's make ourselves one of them. I'll go and grab some of that. And nether quartz. One, two, three, four. And a stick. And boop, there we go. So let's make us a one of them. Cool. We have Golomancer's Bell. And we're going to need that to tell this guy where to go, essentially, and to be able to pick him back up again. So to make this thing work, you need to drop it on what you want it to interact with. In this case, we want it to interact with the alchemical furnace. And then drop the animation core on it. Job done. So you should just start working once I right click on you with the Golomancer's Bell, tell you where you're putting these things. So the alchemy ones are quite smart in that if you right click this one, it's not just going to link that back and forth to that one and that one only. If there's other water jars next to it, it'll do this entire line. So I'm just going to need to link him to that one, that one, and that one. Cool. Now he's going to empty our um, alembics for us which is going to save us a lot of trouble. Uh, so how many empty water jars have I got? Uh, three, I think that is. Yeah, just three. That should be fine, though. We've got plenty of everything. And um, we're overflowing on some stuff. Like, I've got a, you know, I've got two arbors already and two fires because I'm just throwing stuff in there kind of willy-nilly and not really worrying about it because screw it all. Okay, well, that's our golems out. And now we can pick up this guy that we've got our golems as well. Just left-click, and then I'll pick him up. Uh, we can't use him just yet because we need to do another core for him so he can go in back in there. But I have already made one previously, and now can be one, so I'm going to plonk him down as well just to make this thing even faster. And he's already synced up because I was using him before. Cool. So now I've got two little guns running around doing our bidding, and you know what? I love this as an automation thing. It's so cool just seeing these little guys running around and lording over them. It's so much fun. So I might even uh, do some other stuff and maybe make a farm out of them with some of the uh, other golems you can get. So some of the other cores can get like gatherers, they'll just pick up items, 
get uh, ones that empty containers, harvest crops, uh, can guard things, fill the kind of thing. There's one that's can uh, attack enemies, that kind of thing. So you can have a bunch of them running around doing different things, can upgrade them, make stronger ones, etc. Oh, I also did some of this research. I never did that, actually. Black wool and gold. I can make a tiny hat for my golem. Dude, that's awesome. I am so doing that if I can. I've got no black wool. Black. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I've got any ink. Oh, I don't have enough. Oh, I might do that later. Anyway, uh, so I think the next thing that we want to get onto is making a new wand. And there's a very specific reason I want to do that. But in order to do that thing, I am going to need some more mana in my wands, I think. Uh, how much going there? Yeah, I'm going to need to go and fill these things up with mana. So I'll be back in a little... Okay, and I'm back. So... <clears throat> Okay, and I'm back. So I filled up both my wands, and I don't know about you, but I'm getting kind of sick of having to go out to the nodes every time to go and fill up my wands, because that's really boring. So let's work on not doing that. Uh, but the, we're going to need to do some prep for that. So what is going to let us actually move the nodes is this research here, node in a jar. So it lets you trap a node within glass and slabs on top right click with your wand and it will turn into a jar that you can take with you and you can bring it back and just put it up on your wall or something but problem being that this will cost us 70 of each element and our wand can only hold 50 so we're going to have to make a better wand and one of the reasons that I made all of this armor that gives us all the these discount is that that means we can skip past one of the other wands so this one we've got now which is our great wood wand core uh, the wand core determines how much uh, mana your one can hold and so these ones on the outside they will uh, hold a 75 mana which is enough but I'd rather just get straight to something a little bit better we're gonna go for the silverwood one which will hold a hundred mana so first off we need to make a rod which got every kind of shard in it and a silverwood log and some sailor's mundus so we need to make some sailor's mundus first so that needs a shard and two ethereal essence. And ethereal essence is not easy stuff to come by. If I look it up here, I think I've got some. Yeah, I've got a ton. Ooh, I've got loads of water ones. Wow. Um, so ethereal essence, the only way you can get it is either by killing wisps, which spawn around the place, um, usually near tainted nodes, that kind of thing, or just kind of unstable nodes. And oops, let's just make sure I've got everything here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, yeah, cool. Uh, but the main way that you tend to get it is by destroying ore nodes. So if you just wander up to a node and start picking away with your pickaxe or any kind of tool, really, it doesn't even matter. Just punch it a few times and it will explode into ethereal essence. Uh, downside being that you can't then recharge your one from it, obviously, because it's gone, you've destroyed it. And that kind of sucks. So I kind of went way away from my home, went miles away and looked around for some ones that I could destroy and got a ton of essence. So cool, I've got that. So let's make ourselves some um, Sailor's Mundus. Uh, um, let's make, sure, let's make eight of it. And, and why am I making that out of aqua? Don't I have more air? Ah, whatever, it doesn't even matter. Uh, shards. Oh no, that's the essence, of course. I'm going mad. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. Hopefully we should have enough charge and I want to do that. Yep, we do. Cool. It's got 14 left, thanks to our wonderful uh, Viz discount. So we need one of those minutes there. I'm just keeping a stack of that because it does come in useful. And um, we need to check our Thormanomicon to check the... Uh, oh, it's not infusion. What am I doing? I'm mad. Mad, I tell you. Cool. Again, trying to keep this as symmetrical as possible, just about, hopefully. Uh, I'm just going to take a quick look at the instability. Ooh, okie dokie. This one's actually got an instability of moderate. Hmm. In that case, I think it might not be a bad idea to make something that's going to reduce that instability a little bit. Let's take these things out of the way. It would be a good idea to have some spares on hand. And I'm going to make some tallow candles. So a good way to, or the main way to reduce instability, is to place things around the altar, uh, very specific things, but they have to be incredibly symmetrical as always with the 
and fusion altar. So, um, essentially, going to make some tallow candles and sort of place some in between all these pedestals, I think, and that'll work. Um, kind of like almost like I've done with the night ore. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if night ore helps in terms of instability. It might do. I don't know. I mean, I place it, um, you know, symmetrically just in case. It was mostly just there for light, but I figured just in case, better pick, uh, put it symmetrically. Because if you don't put these things that will help instability symmetrically, then it will make it worse, and it's generally not going to be a fun time. So let's make ourselves some tallow. Have a quick look at that. Uh, here it is in alchemy. So that is two Picantio and zombie brain. Cool. So how many am I going to be needing? Quite a lot, I think. Um, yeah. So let's get myself some vials. Right file. If I can actually spell the thing right, that would help. Uh, let's actually make a couple more of those in case. They're just uh, glass and clay. I'm not sure I said that before. Make some more of them as well. Cool. So we just need some Procantio. Let's grab a bunch of that. Cool. And some zombie brains. Zombie. Um, assuming it's this one. I think it's this one. Let's grab a stack of them anyway. Um, actually, let's grab some of those Thorncraft brains just in case it is those ones. Don't know for sure now I think about it. And I need some water to fill that thing up. Uh, back it. There we go. Boop. And in you go. Cool. Uh, so let's try making some of this stuff. That hasn't boiled yet. Come back. <laughs> need to wait for it to boil first. That would help. There we go. In you go. In you go. Yep, it's just normal brains. Cool. That's that one. And a turn more. And all of the stuff, please. There we go, cool. Made a bunch of tallow. So the tallow is made for making tallow candles, which make like so. If I make some string. Uh, I don't actually have enough string, so let's make it out of the cotton that I've been growing, which makes it for us very easily, like so. Boop, there we go, 64 string. Go away. And two tallow and some string makes us three white, can white tallow candles each. So now we have 30 of them. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to lay these things out like so, I think. Just sort of nice and symmetrical. Cool, we've got some spare tallow candles lying around as well. So can I put these on walls? No, it doesn't look like it. Fair enough. Let's uh, send those things away. Uh, if we look at uh, is it crystal clusters? Uh, yes, these ones. So that's just six shards, job done. So I think I've got a ton of air shards. I'm not sure why I've got so many more of them than other things, but I ain't going to complain. So let's make, say, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, yeah, eight should be good. Let's have eight of them as well. And plonk these things around at strategic places. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool. So hopefully that should do a good job of reducing our instability. Fingers crossed, anyway. All right, so let's get back to making this thing. Uh, should get all that stuff up there, get all this stuff down here. Oop, down you go. Oh, yeah, I've already got uh, everything on there, haven't I? Uh, let's make sure I've got everything down there in case we need to replace anything. Cool. And then we need our great wood log, uh, not great wood log, silver wood log. That one, that's what we're making our one out of. Uh, let's whack that in the middle. Cool. And let's make sure we've got all the essentia we need, because that would also be incredibly important. Uh, Alright, so we need nine of all the base aspects plus magic, okay. Alright, I think I've got just about everything. Let's double check, we needed nine of everything right. Yep. Nine of every element plus magic. Awesome. They're just going to carry on emptying my uh, Alembics for me. I'll leave them to it. And uh, let's try making this thing. Go! So hopefully we uh, put down enough stuff to make sure this won't be unstable. Fingers crossed. We shall see. That's the hope anyway. So drawing in some stuff. Very good. Nothing's come off. Just want to watch out for these uh, lightning strikes and where they're going. If 
they strike one of these ped pedestals, run to it, make sure it hasn't killed the item or knocked it off. Otherwise it's going to start draining extra stuff and get even more unstable and cause stranger things to happen. Looks like this is working pretty well though. Awesome. Yeah, it's all going fine. Cool. In. Yep. Cool. The instability is being pretty good. Looks like I put enough stuff down. And cool. That's it. Job done. We have this thing. We have our silverwood rod. Awesome source. So, obviously this is just a rod by itself. Not really going to do a fat lot. Let's get rid of some of this uh, other rubbish that I don't need. Chuck it all back in there. Don't need any of you. Cool. Uh, so, to make an actual wand out of this, we still need to put a cap to it. And if I've gone to all the trouble of making, you know, a snazzy silverwood wand core, why not go for thormium wand caps? That sounds like fun. So while the wand determines, the wand core determines uh, how much mana these things can hold, the wand caps determine how efficient they are. So with the uh, the gold wand caps, I think I got a uh, five percent off or something like that. Uh, whereas the thormium ones are going to be a little bit better and give us even more of a viz discount. So we're going to use them. So for that we need some thormium nuggets, which obviously we make out of thormium, so that's going to be on our alchemy. And we make thormium by infusing iron with some magic. Cool. Nice and easy. So was that four, was it? Uh, yeah, that's four. Cool. So one vial will do me two iron. Awesome source. Let's grab some iron. Uh, one, two. And grab a bucket, because I think I emptied that one. Oops. There we go. Uh, is this thing full? Oh, it's still boiling. Cool. Let's grab ourselves some magic. That's the one. Thank you. And boop. And grab two thormium. Awesome. Job done. So let's turn this into some nuggets for us. Boop. And turn it into one caps. I don't need two, not three. There we go. And then we need to infuse these things. They're not going to do anything by themselves. So that means even more infusion crafting, which is perfectly fine with me. I find it really fun. Uh, so we need six auto fire and air. Oh, that was to make the things. My bad. We need uh, 12 energy and six oram. Okie dokie. And three sailor's mundus. Okie dokie. This should be all right. Let's grab our sailor's mundus back. Sailor's. Uh, one, two, three. So you can tell this is a powerful one because it requires some pretty hefty stuff. Uh, let's see. One, two, three. There. One, two, three. There. Cool. That's nice and even. Um, there we have we got enough Oram? I should do, I hope. I think I made some for this. Wherever it is around here. Uh, where on earth did I put it? Uh, if the Oram's like the uh, Sailor's Mundus, you can only get it from uh, the Ethereal Essence. Well, that's one of the main. Oh, yeah, there it is. I've got a decent amount of it. That should be fine, right? Uh, let's look this thing up. Uh, 6 and 12. Cool. I've got loads of potential. Awesome. Yeah, the uh, main place you get that uh, Oram from is from that um, Ethereal Essence as well. So, gonna need to kill some more nodes for that. But thankfully, I've already done it. So, uh, we're gonna have to do this. Oops. Going back. Going back. There we go. There's one. We're gonna have to do this twice, though. So, let's make sure I've got enough Sailor's Mundus for all this. Do I have enough sales minutes for all this? Did I just take up my need? Yeah, cool. One, two, three. And an extra in case anything goes wrong. Should be a fairly stable recipe, I'd imagine. Uh, oh, no, that's moderate. Fair enough, fair enough. And six and twelve is uh, cool. Yeah, we're all good to go, really. So let's do our first one. Boop, off you go. Let's do this thing. And infuse away. So let's assume this is all going to go well. Cool. Alright, there we go. We've got our two one caps. Awesome. Yep. So, one of the uh, reasons I actually made two ones was so I could craft this thing as well, and just because I got sick of going back and forth all the time. So, now we need to craft this thing in our arcane work table again. And it's going to take up, see, 48.6 of our um, uh, viz that we've got stored in our wand, and we only can store 50. That's why I got all of that armor that reduced the cost of this thing, because otherwise we wouldn't quite have been able to make it. So we have a thormium based silverwood wand. That is pretty awesome. So this thing is going to hold a hundred of each mana, and I believe 
it has a little bit less for viscos as well. I'm going to have to go drain some vis so we can see that though. And ow. I did not put my jetpack on. Why didn't I put my jetpack on? That was a terrible idea. God damn it. Okay, so I found a node that I want to trap. I've filled it on one as best I can, just about. And I want to trap this thing, so I've just surrounded it entirely in glass, just leaving the space in the middle empty. And then put some wood slabs on top. And now, hopefully, if we just right click with a wand, bing, it's now a node in a jar. Awesome. So that took quite a lot of mana to do, but now I can just take this thing back home. Pretty sweet. So let's wander off back home and put this thing up on our wall, shall we? Okay, and we're back home. So I've got my node in the jar ready to be put down. Oop, explosion. I think that was a meteor landing. Hmm, cool. I have to go find that later for some moonstone. Cool. Uh, anyway, so we can just plonk our node in the jar down. Now, while it's in a jar, it won't actually recharge any um, elements. And it might actually even lose some sometimes. When you put a node into a jar, it has a chance of becoming dimmer. And that means it will generate its um, its aspects a little slower. But if we just right click this with our wand, that will break the jar. And now we have an aura node in our home. Job done. Uh, so I'm not going to leave it on this uh, mine thing for now. I'll probably swap that out for a cool pedestal or something. Uh, now there isn't any downside to doing this particularly. Besides the fact that you can make it a little bit dimmer by putting it into a jar. Uh, compared to older versions of Thorncraft where they could merge and become unstable if you had lots of Oranos near to each other, etc. But that doesn't happen in this version, so that's quite nice. We can have as many as we want in here. Uh, but I think that's going to do it for this one. And next time I'll get some uh, more Oranos, or before next time I should say, I'll get some more nodes in here so we can get everything all and ready. And then I'll probably just work on some home improvements. So I think that's going to do it for Thorncraft for now. I'll just come back in here and do things as and when I need them and want them. So that's going to do it for this one. So thank you very much for watching. As always, I'm Mr. Trudel, and I'll see you in the next one. Catch you later.